Hola, how are we? How are we doing? Hi! I don't believe you guys. How are we doing? What's going on? Yes. Hi, bitches! <laughs> Y'all can make some noise in here. Are we ready for a viewing party or what? I am. Are we ready for somebody to fucking go, go home? home? Jesus. Bitch, we if can somebody don't go home... We can start with that. We're starting in 30 seconds. So, Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage. She's chunky yet funky. Her name is Latrice Royale. Royale. Yes. <laughs> hey, mama. Hi, have a seat. Have a seat, mamas. And then, of course, give it a four. Jinx, she's late. <laughs> She'll surprise, be here in a, in a few minutes. She'll be here in a few minutes. Uh, there's always one. You guys know this. This is nothing new. <laughs> How are you, Latrice? Amazing. Amazing. Long time no see. Hey, everybody. How long has it been since you've been uh, with us? A couple of, well, since before the pandemic, right? Before yeah, the, yes, it's yeah. been a, few, a couple of years couple already. Years, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, we're so happy to have you back. Um, are you ready to get into Previously, this gig? Yeah, RuPaul's Drag Race. Let's do it. All right, everyone, let's give a welcome to Miss Jinx Monsoon. Yeah. And also, let's say hello to YouTube, our subscribers. Hello, YouTube. If you have not pushed oh, we're that live. subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> if you have not pushed that subscribe button, please go ahead and do so right now. I'm so <laughs> this always happens when I sit in a chair. There's going to be the memes of my like rubber legs <laughs> later. <laughs> I did Monet's show and I was like in the. <laughs> Hi everyone, sorry I was late. I was sucking dick till the last minute. No, I'm. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you should try it. <laughs> it's fun. Tonight's gonna be fun. Tonight is gonna be fun. Gonna I'm be not funny. wearing lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> They've just been worked over. Well. Welcome, my love. I'm glad that you got that out. You're so, so good. Aren't you glad I came? Yes. <laughs> Literally. Came, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, oh, bitch. Okay. So, how are you doing, Jinx? Like, I'm doing um, great. I'm doing yes. great. <laughs> where did you come from? Where are you? Uh... I live in Portland now, okay. Portland, Oregon, and I came from there. And I leave on Monday for the UK, so I'm a little scatterbrained right now. <laughs> but I'm so happy to be back in Chicago and at Roscoe's. Hi, everyone. <laughs> and I want to remind everyone that at 10.30, we will all be performing. So stick around after the viewing party uh, for the 10.30 show. So make sure you stick around for that. I feel like it's been like two years since I've been here I can't imagine why yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> that was the COVID joke yeah, you yeah, see. No, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know if everyone got that <laughs> <We're right laughs> oh all right guys um, I want to also remind you guys uh, Sunday we have Madonna Rama uh, Mon uh, Madonna all night long um, so that starts uh, what time does that start uh, Sean at 8, 8 p.m. Yeah, 8, Riley York. 8 p.m. So make sure you guys uh, come for that. And next week's guests, you'll have to stick around to hear who those will be. It's going to be good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's going to be a good one. Um, I'm really excited about this one because we have Drag Race Royalty in yes, the house. We yes, we do. Yes, 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 yes. So you guys, uh, we have a winner, which I love when we have a winner in, in the house. And then we have someone who is all-star. <laughs> someone who should have won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, there's two types of winners. The ones that win the season and the ones that really don't have to win the season that still win. Yeah. You know Amen. what I mean? We, yes, yes, yes. 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 We, we, we have those. Yes, we have plenty of those. And we're so happy to have you guys here. Uh, where did you come from, uh, Latrice? I was at home. At home. <laughs> I was at the house and stuff. Um, yeah, bitch, I, I, I'm trying to get things going at my home, so I was been taking some time and yes new home right congrats new home, yes. yes congrats God is good yes. honey won't he do it won't he will <laughs> so okay have you guys been watching the season oh of course religiously <laughs> <laughs> 
wouldn't miss it, right? Do we have any standouts? No, I'm still a huge fan. Um, you know, I was I was really all in for Cornbread. She's a she's a True. friend of mine. Yeah, I and was. And we've worked together on some Brandon Rogers videos. Um, and then I was sad to see her go so early. So I guess now I don't know. I I see most of myself in Willow Pill. Um, <laughs> So I probably relate to her the most, and I'm a narcissist, so that's who I'm, uh, who I'm rooting for. And if I'm lucky, maybe I'll see some of myself in her late oh. night. <laughs> I heard she's coming tonight, right? Uh, well, well, not well to maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah. She, <laughs> if not to you, she will. <laughs> if she's not already here, is Willow here? Willow, are you here somewhere? No, she's not here yet. No, she's not here yet. Willow, okay. do you have a thing for milfs? Anyway, um, yeah, no, it, uh, you know. What's fun is I'm kind of more into spy. All right. Oh. Right. So let's talk about that mini challenge first because we skipped right over that. Them painting Dolly and RuPaul. <laughs> that nose, boo. Bitch, that cheek. <laughs> that cheek. That bitch. cheek. <laughs> Literally. Will Smith was up there, bitch. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> Slap RuPaul across the face. <laughs> oh, that was a good challenge. I love that. That no, was it fun. it was. I was, yeah, yeah, no, it was. I was expecting pretty, but yeah. it was. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly looked good. Yeah, Dolly, yeah. <laughs> uh, we saw Willow walked in. Hey, girl. Hey, Will. How are you, ma'am? Willow, right before you got here, we were just talking, uh, well, uh, someone was talking about you. Oh, I made jokes about fucking you. Sorry yeah. you missed it. <laughs> I do want to ask a question. I'm, uh, you know, I lived in Seattle for 12 years, and Bosco, I think, snuck in while I was like out at one day. But um, what does Bosco smell like? Wow. Is what I want to know. <laughs> does she have the Seattle? You know what I mean. <laughs> have I ever peed? <laughs> Once or twice. <laughs> no, I was hoping she. Smell like a sea. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know why I'm so horny tonight. I just keep taking it to that place. Anyway. Um. <laughs> okay, so on your seasons, you guys did a roast, yes? You, you guys did. Who uh, we did a roast on my season. Did, did, but you guys also did the haters roast. We did the oh, haters yeah, roast together. That. together. Yes. 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 that was fierce. Yeah. <laughs> who did you roast, uh, Jinx, on your season? Oh, all those chuckle fucks. Um, <laughs> um, I, I had a good one for, oh, I can't even remember. What did I say in my roast? They boiled it down to like some semen jokes about much. Michelle Visage, but you know, there was Coco. I said, who would want to top Coco? And um, Alyssa Edwards had no chin, and um, I don't know, Alaska, something, something, something. But um, um, remember, <laughs> remember Roxy Andrews's roast? That was fun, right? And then, um, and then Pheromone is my favorite roast of all. Is the <laughs> she turns every page. Anyway. Oh, and then, uh, you know, Laganja had that iconic moment of talking about dry vaginas, you know. Nothing like a little gynophobia to... Uh, <laughs> so what do you think, uh, what makes you uh, successful in this challenge besides making, you know, uh, a Rue laugh? Like, I feel like sometimes it's either because you have your natural comedians and then you have someone that can tell a joke. You know what I mean? So what do you think uh, favors in this challenge? Well, I, just from my personal and professional experience, um, it's like you got to get it in and get it out. You know what I mean? Kind of like a trick that you don't know. You know what I mean? You get it in, get it out real quick. Set it up, punchline, out of there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the best way to go. Like straight for the juggler, in and out. And don't, these long ass setups with no punchline. We're yeah. going to see that, I, I guarantee <laughs> you. Yeah, roasting on TV, um, you know, unless you're telling... Like Coco, what I loved about Coco, it was like, you know, she played a character and she had an original take on it. It's either... <laughs> Bye. All right. Well, I think we called it, yeah? Awkward. Yeah. Latrice, you were right on that. You said you got to... Did not say it. Yeah, you said it. I said it. You said it. So we see that Georgia might struggle through this, which, I mean, the acting and all that, she has struggled, but she's a phenomenal entertainer. So we'll see what happens. Um, I'm really excited to see Daya. 
<laughs> she, I think Taya is the shadiest bitch on the season. So she's going to have some really good, good reads. I really want to see Lady Camden. I mean, what do you I guys? don't think she's really British. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fake. <laughs> Did you ever catch her speaking American? <laughs> speaking in tongue? <laughs> You're going to say English. English. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever catch her like, hey, can I get a hamburger? Oh, I mean, uh, can I have a hamburger? <laughs> She just seems too British, right? <laughs> I love Dulce Sloan, though. I mean, she gave the same advice Latrice gave, which means Latrice knows her shit. But also, Dulce is, she's amazing. She's worked on The Daily Show for years. She's a voice on that new animated show, The Great North. And you can listen to her on my podcast. Ooh. <laughs> Tell us, tell us more about uh, the projects that you have, uh, both of you, that you guys have going on now. Oh, well, I, um, I'm leaving um, next week, actually, to go back to London to finish my run of Death Drop. We're going to be in London as Yeah! Yeah! yeah. yeah. yeah we should! <laughs> yeah, um, so I'm doing that and just getting back to work slowly but surely, but picking and choosing. So you guys are very blessed to have me. And how's the hubby? How's the hubby? Sexy as hell. <laughs> I'll be in London as well in a week in direct competition wow. with you, I guess, actually. Our, our shows are running at the same time on the West End. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, bitch. I know. Yeah. Um, I'll come <laughs> see you on my, my days off. Yeah. Um, I'm doing a, a show with my music partner. It's called Together Again Again. Um, and I'm working on my third album. And then Dale and I just do, did our photo shoot for the holiday tour this year because Chris, Christmas starts earlier and earlier every year. <laughs> I love that. And what's the name of your podcast? Hi, Jinx. <laughs> That's what it's called. And I have, if you're a Futurama fan, I have a second podcast called I'm 40% Podcast, where we review episodes of Futurama from 20 years ago. <laughs> and I actually was a guest on you that. You were! And I have to say, she is a bigger nerd than you really would ever expect. Like, the shit you know about that cartoon, you should be ashamed because you're a grown-ass man. <laughs> um, I have one other project. I'm also on Grinder right now, um, and I am consenting to dick pictures. This is blanket consent <laughs> to send me dick. And don't get all clever and send me pictures of Dick Van Dyke. Someone's already done that. I've already laughed at that joke. Um, April you know, I'm Fools. Just, we're scanning to see who's got their phone out right now. This gentleman right here, block, sir. Block, block, sir. <laughs> are are you sending the picture? <laughs> that was just a little. Oh my God, when, Jinx. when the live feed comes up, I'm always so shocked by it. <laughs> Three beautiful women and pizza dough rising out of a corset, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Okay, who do you think is going to be in trouble besides Georges? <laughs> what do you guys think? Well, they sure are setting it up for Angeria, right? Yeah. And, and Deja, too. And Deja. Yeah. I might be worried about Deja. 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 Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think, there is there any chance Lady Camden's going to bomb and they're just like, um, they're baiting right, they're, us? They're, yeah, 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 I think yeah, so. Yeah. It could be. She seems pretty No, she's so though. witty. She's so funny. We yeah. had her here a couple weeks ago. She's, I think she's going to do she well. She got this. Yeah, she's she got, got this. this. Yeah. Where'd she find that olive oil top she wears in her confessionals? <laughs> Does anyone else think that? It looks like olive oil, right? The cartoon character. Oh, oh Popeye. No. Sorry. I thought she was talking I'm about I'm only 34. Oil. How is this like? Is this I thought like, you were talking about E-V-O-O, -O, girl. Like olive oil. I'm like, oh. I think Willow's going to do great. <laughs> How do you do? <laughs> okay, well, yeah, let's predict who you think is going to win the challenge. Who do you think is going to be uh, at the top? Um, I think Lady Camden's going to be in top. I think Willow has the potential to be in the top because she's a lot smarter than 
the average bear. Um, and every bear in the room just went. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, the one sitting behind her is kicking her chair like. <laughs> hey, boo boo. No. Um. <laughs> So we have Lady Camden, and then we have Willow. Willow. And I think Angeria's going to slay, too. You think I so? I think yeah. she's going to come, yeah. too. It does seem like they, uh, I mean, you know how they do before the commercial, where Set they really up. bait yeah. you to make you think yeah. something horrifying is going to happen, and it, it ends up just, you know, just someone burped or something. Right. But <laughs> <laughs> Overall, have you guys ha chosen a favorite from the season, from, from the season in particular? And I'm not saying it because she's in the room. I've been saying it. Check my podcast uh, all day. I've been a Willow stand from day one. Honey. Yes. I'm just letting you know, baby. Yes, yes. I've been a, a full stand um, after Cornbread left. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, my top three were, um, like I said, Cornbread because she's a friend, Bosco because she's from Seattle, and Willow because I relate to Willow the most. And I'm a narcissist, and I just want to root for the person who I think is me. Yeah. Um, Latrice, what is the name of your podcast for those of, that have never heard or want to watch or listen? Called the Chop with Manila Luzon. Yes. Yeah. Ever heard of her? <laughs> <laughs> so is it always with, uh, it's you and Manila that do yeah, this? Yeah, oh, okay, we, awesome. That's and something, that's the blessing that came out of the pandemic. Yeah, everybody started podcasting all of a sudden. So we're sitting around, might as well talk shit. Yeah. Yeah, like right before the pandemic, someone was trying to get me to do a podcast, and I was like, I think podcasts are on the way out. And then the pandemic just like, then now everyone has a podcast. Now my Uber driver is asking me to do their podcast. <laughs> like, That's good. Let me ask you this. If they were to do um, a world verse, um, like they did Canada, or yeah, I'm sorry. Um, UK? Yeah, UK. Would you guys do it? What, what, what do you mean, do it? Would you... <laughs> so no. Go back? Yeah, would oh, you ever go no, back? Oh, fuck no, bitch. No, hell no. You won't get me again, that's for sure. No, ma'am, Pam. I'm good. Ooh, her time is done, she said. I always say it depends on the day they ask, you know. I, my, my mood changes from day to day. Some days I'm watching All Stars and I'm like, I'd love to do something like that. And some days I'm like, I'm happy just staying home with my cats. <laughs> so. Would you ever consider Queen of the Universe? Since, uh, I mean, you're very vocally talented. Is that something you would do? Sure, why not? Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised they didn't ask me the first fucking time. I'm like... <laughs> I have two albums. What does it fucking take? I saw Juju B. I was like, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Well, well, well. Wow. Well, that was an interesting turn of events. Sure was. Yeah. So yeah. Bosco, though. Slay, yeah. right? Bosco. Bos Bosco. <laughs> Willow came through like I thought she would. Yes. Yes. And Angeria. And Angeria, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it, it goes to show that, like, sometimes when you deliver with confidence, it can make up for, you know. The lack of funny, yeah. 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 <laughs> Some <laughs> sleepy writing. Um, okay, watching Deja Sky's set oh. reminded me of doing shows in the pandemic for a laptop on Zoom and everyone's muted. Well, you know, like, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta have the confidence, but you tell the joke and no one laughs and you're like, I don't know if I'm funny or not. Um, that's, that's, it was flashbacks for me. So, uh, who do you think are the two bottom this week? I think we have like three or four. Right. Can what? we have three or four? <laughs> do you not agree with me, bitch? Because uh, I can say Daya, she did not deliver. No, no. Mm -mm. Deja did not deliver, no. and neither did Georges. No, that's yeah. three. Uh. Oh, Georges was all right? She was all right. Oh. So she's safe. Oh, maybe I need some contact solution, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, Daya, Thanks, Jason. I think, was the... Daya's definitely in the bottom, I think. 
Uh, yeah, it felt like Daya and Deja. Wait, no, no, Deja. That's who I meant. I'm sorry, sorry. I meant Deja, not Daya. Both two things can be true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Daya was just like talking and talking. Like she and, does. But I said all that set up. And no, no punchline. Punch. That's it. No punch. Okay, uh, Willow was great. Yes. Some good bangers in there. Um, let's see. Do So when you guys do the roast, you've done it before, were there a lot of jokes that they leave out? Like, how much time do you get? Yeah, I had, you know, my, my, my set was really dwindled down on season five. Like, there were a ton of jokes of about RuPaul that I that, that didn't air. Like, I had one old standard joke, one of those good old drag queen jokes where I would I said, like, RuPaul is such a, um, oh, I made a joke about why she always wears long dresses to hide the bruises on her knees. And she's such a slut. If you want her to go down on you, all you have to do is dip your dick in ranch dressing. And then I said, but I'm from Seattle, so that doesn't work on me. You got to use organic hummus instead. So those jokes didn't make it to air. But they sure loved my Michelle Visage is full of semen. That's like, I, I, people just shout that at me on the street. Michelle, <laughs> you're so full of shit. The toilet's jealous, jinks. I'm like, I'm at an airport. Leave me alone. <laughs> okay, so I think in the <laughs> you're the worst dentist ever. Stop yelling that at me. <laughs> oh my god, I can't breathe. So in the top, I have who do you guys have in the top? I have Lady Camden. Willow. Bosco. And Bosco. Those are top three, I think. I agree, You yeah. guys think so? Yeah. 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 Right? I can go with that. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, cool. And then of those three, who do you <laughs> think will be the two? The top of the two? No, bitch. Ain't it time to, like, eliminate three? No shit. Now? Bitch, it's like, bitch, half the cast bitch. is still there, and we have episode 14, bitch. I don't, I, I, I need some bitches to go home. I mean, yeah. it. Yeah, for real. Yeah, the, the I like y'all, but well, bitch. when this started airing last year, I was really <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, Lady Camden look absolutely stunning. She is the winner. Yeah, I'm excited to see because she's a ballet dancer, yeah. so I'm excited to see her just like lean into. She's like the only one I feel like could get away with that because uh, uh, you know you, you want to see drag queens think outside the box, right. um, which. Which breaks my heart for Angeria because I feel like she was like, oh, I'll give them four tutus, but then it didn't really read like a tutu. It read just like a ruffled a gown. Ruffle. And, you know, I think that's the trick is like thinking outside of the box, but making sure that when they see the dress, they go, oh, that's the prompt, you know? How did you like, how did you guys like Deja's? <laughs> Y'all were so quiet. Listen, I mean, not Kitsinera, you're I, so shady. <laughs> I have to tell you, Roscoe's has, first of all, they have the best energy in the world. So when these motherfuckers don't make noise, there's a problem. <laughs> Thumbs up. I heard some audible, no! Yeah. No! Um, all I could think was, didn't Rue on, I don't remember what season, but she was wearing a dress very similar to that, but better, in the same color and pink hair. So it kind of felt like... You just kind of did a, a bland version of a Rue yeah. look, you know, but anyway. Yeah, that was, that was definitely a choice. To do you have in. ideas? If, you, if, if it's 2-2, what would you do? If do? it's 2-2, um, I don't know. I, I, I probably would have went like something classic like the way uh, Lady Campton did. Yeah, I probably would have did that. Something along those lines. What about you guys? Would, what, how would you think outside the box? Latrice is not Latrice invested is like, in I'm that. I'm not doing She's the like, whole bitch, I am done bitch. with the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> no, but I... Willow, bitch. Yes. Bitch. That's outside the box. Yeah, the, yeah. the prosthetic yeah, and the... It was good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. That was good. I probably would have worn, like one, of the, like, one of those dresses that it's, like, you know, up here and the tutu starts, like, at the boobs. Like a maternity oh. gown. And... <laughs> Or I would have come out just like with, you know, like an outfit that was just two twos, like a 22. Um, 
<laughs> that was a lukewarm response. <laughs> so it was like, it was like oh. The audience was really disappointed. <laughs> These three right here in the third row, they're real shady tonight. Jason what about the friends. person on their phone? <laughs> You're or like, one minute jinx. Yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> Who are you talking to? Your mom? Your mom! We're in the middle of something. Boss, Your boss. 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 Oh, um, they're working very hard. <laughs> Can I get another one of these? Woo! <laughs> okay, so based on the roast and the runway, who are your tops and bottoms for the week? Still Lady Camden, Willow. Bosco, for sure. Yes. I don't remember what Bosco like. wore on the runway. Yeah, what, what was? The saw. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was creative. See, that was outside the box, yeah. and it read as a tutu. Yeah, yeah. 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 And great. my bottoms are still Diane, uh, Diane Deja. Diane the Deja. double Ds. Yeah. Yeah. The double, double D, Ds. Double Ds, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, what did Georgia swear? Did I she don't have remember. A... Oh, no, she, had the, she thought she was going to be rock or fish, bitch, with the motherfucking jacket. <laughs> I'm stepping outside of my box. You, you made it a really <laughs> good Stephanie, point. we lost it. Like, um, uh, Batty was saying, uh, oh, you put a leather jacket on, and now all of a sudden you're butch. Like, it's like when... <laughs> Bye. How come you can say butthole on TV, but not asshole? <laughs> they bleep the whole part. But not the ass part. We all know what they're saying. But then he said butthole just now, and that was fine. Not as Are you dirty. upset about that? Yeah, I want to know what's up with the censorship here. We'll call the FCC. Should we say bussy from now on? <laughs> bussy? Oh. Okay, so did we agree with everything? Did we agree with all the critique? They kind of they kind of went in on Daya, uh, Daya right? Yeah. A little bit more than I thought they would. What do you guys think? No, no you thought she deserved that. <laughs> She's the one that said that like, Deja no. looked like a quinceanera dress as well. <laughs> yeah, cheap. <laughs> this, the audience is very vocal They today. are vocal tonight. I love it. Yeah. Must be something um, to her. You know, uh, I felt, I guess, a little... I mean, Deja was very weak in the roast, but then it, it's hard to watch someone who knows they did poorly and then have the judges be like, hey, you did poorly because you didn't take our notes and now we feel disrespected. You know, it felt like, what a rough night for her. And then no one liked her dress. And so, I don't know. I, my, my heart goes out to her. And, uh, you know, I think everyone has at least... What? I love this. Subtle- did you like it? It was <laughs> It was the subtle way of reading her that you just gave <laughs> No one Me? liked her dress. But I was slightly embarrassed for her though standing there. Like, I mean, especially when Michelle was like, Well, we told her to do this and then she still did this and like Rue wasn't there, so she just like threw her under the bus. You know how you know how people who watch this show um, start to you know, figure out the formula? If you're ever on drag race, anyone and Michelle starts by saying, from here up, you look beautiful. Get ready for no more compliments after that. Because it seems like anytime she goes, from here up, you look gorgeous. And now let me destroy your life from here down, you know? And, and it sucks because th- she makes all her own clothes. Yeah, she does. So- you know, yeah. you would think. Oh, know. that's what happened. Yeah, and I yeah. think, what, well, no, no tea, no shade. No tea, no shade. And I give her props for doing that. You know, same with Raja, you know, doing the whole thing, making their own clothes. Um, But I think there were a couple outfits in last week's runway as well with the reflection or the mirror mirror that was a mismark as well. I just hate it because she's so nice. I know, I love her. I love her. Love her. But to be honest... But it's a competition, right? Girl... And we want to see somebody go home, right? We do. Finally. (laughs) Shit. But but to be honest, I'm not buying a ticket to come see her show if those are the jokes she's telling on the microphone at the club, bitch. (laughs) Can I get a yes? No. (laughs) Oh, my God. She just got read by Latrice, bitch. (laughs) Did it seem like Bosco and Lady Camden were the good and evil versions of each other up there? And they yeah. were on opposite sides White of the swan. runway? Yes, yes. They kind of pitted them. Did you watch last week's episode? You did. You, if you of course! Did. 
<laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay, we wanted people to go home, bitch. Well, there you go. Well, I guess two we got people. Two. Yeah. What Call you guys... me Claiborne. I've been calling this shit out. Haven't I been calling yeah. it out? <laughs> bitch! It's time. Your stuff. What do you but guys think? I really, really, really want to say that um, I completely, my heart sinks for Georgia's because I know the feeling of feeling beat down week after week after week, and you're trying and you're trying and you're trying, and nothing you're doing is working, and you just feel defeated, and it takes a mental toll on you. You start questioning yourself. You start wondering, am I good enough? What the hell am I doing here? And all those things, I can see it in her face. That was not the lip sync assassin that we all know as Georgia's. She really, really let it go, and she was accepting of her time is done. And I understand that, because you know. You, you feel it when you're in production. You know um, when, when your number's up. And, well, you never got a number. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Why y'all so sensitive? I told you, they're gonna get you later. You're a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stupid. I'm just kidding. And no. I, I, I think it was Trixie who, who said it. Um, and, and tell me if you guys agree. There's just, there's some queens that are really good at drag race. And then there's girls that are just really good at drag and what they do. Yeah, that, and that's yeah, the thing. And I think yeah. that, uh, y you know, sometimes someone t finds a common ground and they're just, you know, they excel at, at both. But, um, yeah, it's playing the game is a little bit different than what we do on, on a daily, right? On a daily, right? right. For sure, for sure. And well, yeah, like, because no one can be good at every single goddamn thing, right? Unless you're jinx. I, I can't sew to save my life. I can't, you know, like, I can't, I, anything fashion, I just feel like I'm like, you know, I was held back three grades, you know? <laughs> but like, you know, no one can have every single superpower. We wouldn't even want to watch that. Like, Bianca, thank God they never made her really sing, right? She had to rap, but that was, no, I'm just joking. But anyway, besides Bianca, I mean, like, you know, who's good at everything? And so I just hope when fans watch the show, they don't like, hold it against someone, you know, because there's always that narrative of, like, you knew you were going to be tested on this. Okay, you can know it's happening and still, you know, have to, like, you still know it's your weak point. So I think as much as knowing your strengths, you got to know your weaknesses and just have a strategy to weave around that. And I think they, I, we said this last week, I think they all had a strategy, but this has gone for so long that they're just tired and defeated and they're just like what the fuck do we do now, no strategy like willow strategy she has a strategy every single week it's like something different she's like i'm gonna do this time this like it, it's so good and it's so good to watch um so we agree with what happened in this episode yeah yeah i'm here for it Two bitches okay. went home. That's great. Two bitches went home. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> and, oh my and god! Now we got a competition. Is this so. interfering with your schedule? <laughs> <or> something? <laughs> <laughs> Just something else to do. You going to steam Not really. Bitch? I don't really. And then we're gonna all be bitching because it's over. You know how that goes. That's, yeah. Well, you know, one thing I keep thinking about, like with any season that's like taking place on the tail end of the pandemic, I can't imagine like having, you know, like a year and a half of isolation in your house trying to figure out how to navigate that and then be put on reality TV because you, you've you like, you know, two years in isolation, I forgot how to do most human things. Like grocery shopping terrifies me now, you know? <laughs> like, so I can't imagine going on Drag Race for your first time after, you know, the experience of the pandemic. I love her. Yay. All right, so we're going to do some Q&A right now for our lovely, lovely guests. Do we Thank have anyone any questions? in the audience with questions? For, for we these got legends? Okay, I, I have one right over here and then one right over there. Um, pardon me. Okay, here we go. Hi, this question is for Jinx Monsoon. Um, is there any truth to the rumors that uh, you've been cast on... Uh, a version of All Stars that's all winners? No, that's Ginger Minge. We look basically exactly like each other, and people oftentimes get us confused with each other. Um, so, yeah, that was Ginger. But there was Anything a you heard about me, it's actually about Ginger Minge, my body double. <laughs> all right, I have a question over here. 
Hi, um, this is for both of you. Uh, it's just a, um, when you guys get like DMs from just random people, <laughs> like does that weird you out? Like when people, or I mean, do they say like strange yeah. things or? <laughs> um, I, what I'll say is after, you know, like a decade since my season aired, I have had to kind of put up more boundaries. I used to like to be very accessible and there's just too many people out there who will take an opportunity to pierce through your armor and try to tear you down and it became an act of self-preservation and mental health to put up more boundaries, but then I just really ladle on the sentiment when I do a meet and greet, you know. I like make up for it by really trying to get to meet people and meet and greets whenever I can and have a real conversation with them. So, um, because you know, every once in a while, someone's got an opinion and it's just that opinion that sticks with you for weeks. And if you have OCD, anxiety, and depression, you know, the holy trifecta, um, it's not always fun to deal with those people. <laughs> Amen. All right, we have another question for you ladies over here. Hello. When compared to your original seasons and talking with girls from more recent seasons, what are some of the things that surprise... Oh, oh, oh. Okay, um, we're going to... All right, before we start, there's something yes. that I want to say. Um, it is April Fool's Day. It's April 1st. But Roscoe's is also celebrating 35 years. Yes. So can we make some noise for that? 35 years on the strip. And Nation, I just want to thank Roscoe's and the family for having us here. Gracias. All right, so we're going to have a question over here. Hold on. Hello, once again. Uh, so my question was, is my phone on? I don't know oh, if it is. You've got to talk there into the go. mic. There uh, you go. When comparing your original seasons or discussing your original seasons with queens who have been on the show more recently, what are some differences or surprises when making those comparisons? The check. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Point blank. <laughs> We didn't get paid very much per episode <laughs> back then, but these girls are doing better than we were. Um, but also, they're better taking. We're, they're, the, the fact that they're taken care of on set better than we were back then. Because we had some times that it was real well, sketchy. You, you, you contributed to making that happen, right? I did. Have you a were moment. very vocal. I had a moment. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you got AC. The, the studio is all extra cold because of me. Are you hearing this, Willow? The reason you were freezing. Because of me. Yeah. <laughs> it's because of the tree. <laughs> but also, RuPaul doesn't like to sweat either. So she was siding with me. So that happens. And she's a boss. So we made it happen. Um, yeah. What else? I think um, my season was the last season where we could wear whatever we wanted for our interview confessional oh, moments. Yeah. And then season six, they started making you wear the same outfit every single confessional so that they could really you know like they have more freedom Edit. with editing so if you go back to my season you can still kind of like um, um, uh, you know Connect all Sherlock your way <laughs> through and see what stories are kind of being pushed forward so that's probably the biggest surprise to me is having to wear the same outfit every day I guess that's not very interesting no. <laughs> alright we have one more over here Hi, it's so amazing to see both of you. I'm such a huge fan. My question is for both of you. Um, as performers, very successful and talented performers, um, what do you do in moments where you are rejected? I know that even though you're both so successful, you've probably experienced your own rejections. I experienced one today, and it kind of brought me down, and I just wanted to know if you had any advice about how to ground yourself and just keep pushing forward. Let me just tell you this, baby. Every no leads to a yes, and I've had a lot of no's in my life. And if it wasn't for the fact that I believed in myself and my talent and my abilities, I would be in a situation where I wouldn't excel. But I love myself too much for that, and don't let other people's opinion of you validate you. Validate yourself. This was not for you, whatever it was, and there's something greater for you coming up. So just... Just know that. Come on, yeah, Reverend the Tree. Oh, give it up for the two that went home. Uh, give it up for George and, and Deja. Deja. Come on. <laughs> I wasn't Deja even trying to be shady. The, the two that I, went I, I swear I wasn't. Yeah. Natural for you, Nisha. 
Hey, um, do, Batty, do you listen to? We were talking about podcasts earlier and stuff like that. Do you listen to uh, Race Chaser? I do. I love it. Um, next week we have Alaska and Willem here. Oh my God! Tickets are live right now. So go to Instagram because we will have Willem and Alaska here from Race Chaser next week. So Race get Chaser. your tickets uh, now. Uh, 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 uh. Break it all down, bitch. Did, did you see the, the I'm going to be on the pod. The that look at this. Let's see. Oh, they're getting it, honey. They're getting it. The week before was like 40 seconds. You guys 40, sold out you in 45 seconds. You guys were like 45 seconds. seconds. So let's see how uh, We know those hoes are already sold out in 10 seconds. Out. That's great. No, I'm just uh, we had a I question, have a question right over here, here, I believe, right? Yes. Hello, ladies. Sorry. Hi, Nisha. Latrice Jeans. Um, I, this question for you is something really hard to do for me because I do not handle really well the English, but... You are doing amazing. I'm we trying, are, I'm trying to amazing. do my best. Uh, first of all, I want to say that I'm a huge fan of all of you. I'm coming all the way uh, since Venezuela until here to be able to meet the three of you, and this is an amazing experience that I, I, can, I can explain it. My question for you is this. Um, what, ad what life advice can you give to someone who just arrived to a country who doesn't know nothing about it, nothing about the system, doesn't have friends, doesn't have family, doesn't have nothing but a, suit f uh, a suitcase full of, of shirts and pants and dreams to live on? Thank you. Oh. Uh, I oh think God. you're His already. His name is Nesto, by the way. Oh. Nesto, I think you're already doing exactly what you should do. You've found a place where you can find community. You've just introduced yourself to a room full of people. You've just let everyone know here in Chicago in the LGBTQ plus community that you are new here and you're looking for community. And that's my favorite fucking thing about being queer is that I have family everywhere in the world and wherever I go, it's like confetti rains down at a moment's <laughs> notice. You know, just, um, I would say lean into your community here and you've just now introduced yourself to everyone. So everyone go say hi to Nesto after this. Yes, 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 yes. Good answer, good answer. <laughs> Question and answer. Anybody else have any other questions for these lovely gals? Excuse me, white hips coming through. Boom, shakalaka, shakalaka, laka, laka. Hi. Hi, uh, my name is for Jinx. My name is Cody. Uh, first, I just want to say that uh, Take It Back from the Ginger Snapped is one of my all time favorite songs. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, That's my second album, you see. That's so good. Um, so one of the things that you've talked about after your season was that when fans would see a Jinx Monsu show, they would be confused because it wasn't the Jarek that they met on Drag Race. It reminds me of queens like Ben de la Creme who were told during their season that they were hiding behind a character when Ben de la Creme is a character that she is playing. So my question is, do you think that the drag persona as something apart from the performer is something that's becoming less popular or maybe less relevant because Drag Race doesn't really demonstrate that kind of drag and has historically like penalized queens for not being, you know, genuine or authentic in their eyes. Well, I guess it's probably about finding a balance, you know. There's moments I wish I would have like shown more of like what I actually do in my shows on my season, but I don't like to live in like thinking like how could I change the past because obviously I'm happy with the outcome. But um I think it you know, it's, uh, I have a lot of confidence in drag audiences. And what I'm seeing now is not the persona style drag or the character style drag dying out, but the audience is, learn like uh, the audience and the fan base has a better appreciation for the full breadth of nuance that exists in drag as an art form, you know? And I see the fan base like standing up for people more than maybe like when I did it 10 years ago when it was a smaller community. I don't know. I just feel like 
Context is everything, and give your audience all the credit because they can handle a little bit of nuance and a little bit of like, they can handle watching me be a sweetheart on TV and then go see me read my sister's Below the Semen at a roast, you know? Like, they can handle that. So some of that was probably me just being like, you know... Um, I hope everyone isn't too worried, <laughs> too, too put off when they come to my show and I talk about fucking everyone I see, you know? Because <laughs> you didn't get much... Oh, wait, Ivy, never mind. <laughs> Ooh, Ivy Winters. I guess I've always been a... So I guess my whole point was moot. <laughs> we have a question here. Hi, so um, first off, I want to say, Latrice, you are one of my favorite drag queens of all time. You were my... Uh, my name's Austin. Um, you were my high school quote when I graduated back in the day um, from your uh, reunion, uh, get up, look sickening, all of that, make them eat it. Um, so just to jump on the advice train, um, any advice for another big, black, um, thick uh, person who's also working on himself um, in the love department since you are in a successful relationship? Oh, baby, trust somebody wants your big ass. I promise you that. I promise you that. Like, don't don't believe the hype. I had to import mine from from Tennessee. So your your dream man may not be here in Chicago, but he is for you. He is there for you. So don't lose hope of that. You are sexy as fuck, and somebody want to fuck a fat bitch every once in a while. I promise you that. So you good. I love that. Just love yourself. Love yourself. There's only one of you. Hi. Sure. Uh, so my question is for both of you guys. So I know you, you guys were like from earlier seasons, and I felt as though like as of recent seasons, like there's more twists and the, they felt more produced. Do you guys feel as though like the natural like of how older seasons were, feel like they've been overproduced as of recently, like recent seasons? Yes. One hundred percent. Yes. Um. You know, there was a lot of authenticity back in the day, like, you know, um, because a lot of it, the, the talent that graced the room um, was enough for production. We didn't have to be coached. We didn't have to put on airs. We were, didn't have to be asked to do things because it kind of came natural because we're all shady bitches and we love to make television. So um, it's a new generation um, and you know, we had the struggle bus of season seven, but then we have great stars. Don't act like it ain't true. <laughs> uh, but then we have the biggest stars in the world that came out of that season, the Trixies. You know what I'm saying? The Trixies. The Trixies. <laughs> and the Katias. Yeah, because they're hand in hand, butt in butt, whatever. Um, but yeah, so it, it, it's changed and the dynamic has changed and they're a lot more involved in pushing narrative rather than talent, so. I think it's just a symptom of the, sh I, I, you know, I don't think anyone knew how long this show would be on television when it started. And so every year that it gets picked up again and there's more money thrown at it and every t new TV station that they move to, you know, <laughs> the show has to evolve and yeah, I think I agree with everything Latrice said, but I also think there's just a natural progression of evolution. I just always hope that, you know, the community that's watching the show is being reflected in the show. So as long as you still feel yourself being seen in the show, then it's... And it's like, I used to say this about the show American Horror Story Coven, one of my favorite seasons of television ever. Even the worst episodes are still the best hour of television you're going to watch that week, you know? Like, we could talk about production, but we're all sitting in a room watching this show together, so it's still doing its job, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love her. Hi. Hi, I wanted to ask you both a kind of riff on a usual question here and instead of asking you who you want to see on All Stars or a show like that who's one girl from the show you would ban from ever coming back <laughs> she's already been banned Tyra. I was just gonna say <laughs> Tyra name. Sanchez she's already been banned honey she's been exed honey from the yeah chopped is, yeah, it, is it Tyra Tyra, Tyra, Tyra. Sanchez yeah, yeah. Tyra Sanchez yeah. uh, uh, Jinx looks like she's still thinking about it is there somebody <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I think all the people I would say already banned themselves, you know, just 
bad behavior, but I also think everyone has um, opportunities to grow. What so about your ex? I don't. What? My what, about, what about your ex? Ivy Winters? No. The other My one. Mag- ex? What's her name? Magnolia Crawford. We, <laughs> we had sex once. <laughs> And neither this of us, is what I'm here we for. We both yeah. were hiding the fact that we were a drag queen from the other one. We were both drag queens in Seattle, and neither of us knew it when um, we fucked. And um, <laughs> did y'all know that she fucked Magnolia? Magnolia? No, Magnolia fucked me. Of course she did. <laughs> but don't. I got another question over here for you, ladies. It was good though. What? The dick was right. I did that crab walk position. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> do not do it. <laughs> Oh, fuck! Right, get it, see? I was we late! <laughs> so, my question for the- We're gonna give them one second. Latrice just fell the fuck out. Such a fucking lady. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm from Kansas City, and I grew up with Monique Hart, and I want to know- Mo Hart. Mo Hart, sorry, thank you. I wanted to know what it was like when you guys had to lip sync against each other and what your relationship is like now. Oh, oh, bitch. Uh, yeah, me and Mo, we were good then. That's the thing that's of it. Like, we were wonderful then, and we're especially wonderful now because that's my crab eating buddy, bitch. We go to, to the crab boil together and fucking set up shop and fucking <laughs> get greasy together. So that's my girl, honey. Is that one of those places where they dump it out on the table? No, we get it in a bag. <laughs> You're either eating crab out of a bag or straight off the table. That's my favorite. Do we have any more questions in the audience? We have one over here. Uh, you got it? I'll stay right here. Hi. Uh, my name is Carlos. My question is for Latrice. Uh, from Cherry Pop and AJ the Queen, which one was the best experience? <laughs> um, obviously, um... AJ and the Queen was like really a moment for me because not only did I get a chance to star in it, um, I was in the writer's room, for those of you who didn't know. So um, it was a big honor for RuPaul to ask me to come in. And so a lot of the stories that you saw um, came from me. So um, yeah, that's a little lone fact. All right, we have another question right here. Hi. (laughs) In the seats with all of us. Um, My question is for Jinx. Uh, You mentioned your third album earlier, which I cannot wait for. Um, And I am a huge fan of your solo shows. The first time I saw you was the Ginger Snapped here in Chicago. Obviously loved Beach City Bumbo, went to that as well. Is there a plan for a show with the third album also? Yes, so the third album. Her Red Bull just kicked in. (laughs) Right now I'm touring my show called Together Again Again, um, where it's set in the year 2065 and it's me reflecting on my career um, between 2022 and 2065. So it's all stuff that hasn't actually happened yet. So it's me like self-manifesting. The album, we don't have a title yet, but it's an epic rock opera set in outer space. And um, so we're gonna write a show that's an epic rock opera set in outer space. So um, haven't written that show yet, but uh, <laughs> that's down the line. Yeah, we always write the music to support our shows and then our shows to support our music and vice versa. It's like a snake eating itself, yeah. <laughs> we have any other questions? Any other questions for these two lovely ladies? Going once, going twice. All right, let's make some noise for... Jinx Monsoon! And Miss Latrice Regal! Do not go anywhere because we will be performing at 10.30 p.m. So feel free to go to the bar, get yourself some cocktails. Uh, The kitchen is closed. Oh, where's the person who wants me to sign their Funko Pop? Let me sign that uh, for you, babe. But uh, (laughs) Yes, uh, so stick around. Uh, 10.30 show time. Um, you ready to say goodbye? You want to come right over here next Yeah, to I had a really good time with you. Did you guys have a good time with us? I love Arch. you, Jason. We'll see you guys next week with Alaska and Willem. Willem. It's going to be crazy up here on this dirge. YouTube, you have a good night. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Batty David. And I'm Nation Lopez. We love you. We'll see you guys at 10.30 for show time.